All right, 4.3 is aquatic food production systems. Uh, aquatic systems provide a source of food production, as you can tell from the name. Uh, the unsustainable use of aquatic systems can lead to environmental degradation and collapse of wild fisheries. Aquaculture provides potential for increasing food production. Um, so the first understanding is that demand for aquatic food resources continues to increase as human population grows and diet preferences change. Um, in the oceans, our food um, systems are based with um, phytoplankton as the producers, um, and those phytoplankton support really, really diverse food webs. A lot of these food webs actually go to uh, higher trophic levels than, than land-based food webs do. Um, which also increases their diversity. Aquatic, which includes both freshwater and marine um, or salt or oceanic based flora and fauna are harvested by humans. Um, the highest rates of productivity or growth are found near coastlines or in shallow seas where upwellings and nutrient enrichment of surface water occurs. Um, so as we just discussed in period four, um, upwelling is when those nutrient rich waters get forced up to the surface um, and then the excess nutrients allow phytoplankton to reproduce um, and then um, expand in their productivity. Um, so you can see net primary production productivity of producers after respiration. Um, and then you can see how, how that's really concentrated, especially in coastal areas. Um, and then also you'll see this happening uh, in islands and stuff too. So like out here is the Galapagos Islands, which happen to get a lot of upwelling. So you get a lot of life out there too. Um, harvesting some species such as seals and whales can be controversial. Ethical issues arise over bio rights, rights of indigenous cultures and international conservation legislation. Um, so. These are controversial because, you know, we recognize that these species have a, a, a level of intelligence that we can sort of connect with and relate to. Um, however, a lot of people have been, you know, hunting and using these animals to survive since, you know, since we started actually surviving as a species. Um, so there's a lot of places where, um, though whaling is illegal internationally, um, there's a lot of uh, native cultures that still do hunt whales for uh, traditional use and, you know, really holistic purposes. Um, when I was in Alaska, we actually, our kayak instructor um, actually had some whale that he brought one time. So we got to try it. Um, it was incredibly rich and like really, really, really chewy. Um, there was some of that blubber on there too, um, which is such a dense fat that it's like really hard to chew, but also which is why blubber was such a great fuel source back in the day. Um, developments in fishing equipment and changes to fishing methods have led to dwindling fish stocks and damage to habitats. Um, so as we get better at fishing, um, we've actually started to overfish. Um, and then you can see how those stocks kind of become more and more depleted over time, uh, where now we're seeing over a third of the stocks have crashed and then, you know, over half of them are overexploited or worse. On a sustainable exploitation of aquatic systems can be mitigated or prevented at a variety of levels, international, uh, national, local, and even individual um, through policy legislation or changes in consumer behavior. Um, so there's lots of international agreements, there's um, boundaries that are set to as far as like territorial waters exist within the certain nautical miles of the shore and then beyond that is each country is allowed to fish and then beyond that is sort of open waters where there's other, other agreements. Um, and then there's things that might change consumer behavior too. I mean there's those um, little printout cards for identifying which seafood is the most sustainable to eat, which one is less sustainable. Um, aquaculture has been expanding really rapidly um, as human population increases. Um, and, and it's a, a viable option to meet that increasing need. Um, it provides additional food resources, but also supports economic development and it's expected to continue to rise. 
Um, of course, there's lots of different species we could raise with aquaculture. So depending on the species, it really affects how sustainable aquaculture is as a solution. Um, but some issues in, around aquaculture could include loss of habitats. Um, so when you're growing shrimp, you have to destroy a lot of mangroves in order to put in the shrimp farms. So mangroves are a really rich habitat that also really help with like flood control and nutrient cycling and um, other issues with sea level rise. Um, you might get pollution from aquaculture. Um, so maybe you have like some sort of like uh, treatments, antibiotics, other things that you're using. Um, you also could have um, some like pollution from the genetic material. Um, if you have fish that are, a lot of times they have sort of like a reduced diversity um, since they're just trying to raise a lot of the same fish, you know, they kind of are all the same size. Um, and so if you have that reduced diversity, you know, that there's the threat of, of depleting the genetic diversity of wild populations as well. Um, we could have eutrophication. So if you add a lot of excess nutrients or if you get like um, a lot of uh, waste products from these fish that could lead to um, changes in the biochemical oxygen demand and that could lead to um, anoxic environments. Uh, a lot of different effects that can happen um, from aquaculture. So some examples of skills and applications um, discuss a case study um, referencing the controversial harvesting of a named species, evaluate strategies that can be used to avoid unsustainable fishing, um, explain the potential value of aquaculture for providing food for future generations, and then discuss a case study that demonstrates the impact of aquaculture. Um, some connections for international mindedness and theory of knowledge as well. And shout out to mrkramerscience.com.